Hi everyone, Tim here. How's it going? It's been a while since I released a video and you know, there's actually a legit reason for this. Uh, my old microphone stopped working on both macOS and Windows machines after another system update. I guess they changed something in the uh, APIs and the old drivers no longer work. And when I contacted the manufacturer, they said that the driver update coming in sometime in the future without any specific date. So, you know, that didn't really cut it for me. I waited for a few weeks. Uh, and then I just had to buy this new mic, uh, which um, is why I sound different. And you know, I think this actually will work better for the purpose of my videos. But today's topic is uh, pull requests. So I want to talk about pull requests. Um, you know, it's I think it's, um, again, it's going to be like sort of off topic from the main course. But I think it's important to talk about that because um, I think most of you are using open source software on a daily basis, maybe even all of you. And, uh, you know, it's good to give back to the community. And the best way to give back to open source projects is to obviously contribute back to them. And you do this by sending pull requests, right? So I want to talk about a few uh, not so obvious things today. I will not talk about, you know, things that you can find online top 10 things to do when you're sending pull requests, like common sense things like, you know, make sure you cut builds, make sure the test passes, make sure you add tests if you add new features. All of that stuff is simple and you probably know it yourself. So I don't want to talk about that. Let's talk about more of a, I guess, organizational side of the thing. So I've actually been, um, I could say, blessed by the you guys all, all watching me and, you know, helping me build this thing up because we already had 14 pull requests to this project. Some of them are closed, but most of those closed ones were just closed to rework them. Uh, but I've actually accepted most of them. And uh, again, thank you very much for helping me build it up and fix all the issues that I had with it. So all of the guys, all of the names that you see here, thank you for this. This really helps. Uh, but today I want to uh, talk about this last pull request I actually got. Uh, again, it was by uh, the same guy, Javier. And uh, I don't, like, I don't, I don't want to make it sort of a bashing video. I don't want to bash this uh, pull request because the work here is really great and the code go is good and you know everything works perfectly fine. I just want to uh, talk about how you can make merging of this uh, of your work into the main project easier both for you and for the maintainer because this pull request, for example, I cannot merge it for uh, reasons I will explain over the video. Uh, so let's start with the first major point that I actually have here prepared. And this is you should always do only one feature or one change per your pull requests. Again, I'm going to use this pull request as an example. And if you look at uh, here, this is the summary of implemented things. He implemented uh, logout thing. He implemented uh, media breakpoints uh, with like responsive uh, layouts and stuff. He added SAS for, I think it was for responsive stuff again, uh, a new webpack configuration for production, collapse and expand action in answers, client and server question pagination, then real time stuff, and then GitHub authentication with for like uh, logging into the app. That is a lot of stuff. Actually, each of those points should have been uh, its own separate pull requests. Because one, it will be way easier for me to review them. Uh, because right now, if I go to the, there's like 31 commit already. And if I open the changes tab, uh, this is basically like, I don't know, seven, eight pages of code. I actually did went through all of this uh, to review this. And, you know, it took a lot of time. Like I, I, I would prefer to um, spend less time on reviewing the code that you guys sent to improve um, the product, right? So I, can, I mean, I can show you the old uh, pull requests again from the same Javier, for example, here, he fixed the issue with notification. And this is this is actually how the good pull request looks, right? It's it's short, there are some fixes here, it explains very well what it does. Uh, it references the um, number of issue and it worked really, really, really well, like in this case, it's really hard to get to all of that stuff. So make sure to keep your pull request small and focus only on one thing. Uh, the next point is um, explain what you did, which is really actually very well done here. So the summary is really good. 
but you also need to explain why exactly you did it and if you can reference issues open issues or you know create issues prior to that or discussions uh, in Gitter or whatever with the maintainers that's always a plus so in this case he actually doesn't explain most of the changes like I can understand uh, logout I can understand responsive stuff but I'm not sure I agree on adding another Webpack configuration for production. Like we definitely will need that at some point, but I don't think we would need a new, completely new file. For example, the way it was done here is not how I would do that. And then there's real time updates with WebSockets, which is uh, actually something I cannot merge at all because this was one of the planned lessons. This was something that I wanted to show you all in the live stream how to build and then explain it in a video. Uh, and um, if we go further into it, so if we take a look at the um, commit here, real time updates, I don't remember if it was this one. Um, no, it wasn't this one. Wait a second, let me see. Ah, there we go. So he actually used the um, existing library, which was, uh, what was it called? RethinkDB WebSocket client and RethinkDB WebSocket server on server side, which basically does all the work for you. So you don't really know how it works underneath. You know, if you never used WebSockets, you will not understand how that works. And uh, my idea is to teach you that, right? So I can't really merge that. I, I like. And this brings us to the next major point of what you should be doing before doing the pull request is actually opening an issue. Like if you are sending a pull request with a new feature, always, always open an issue and ask, can I, like, I want to implement this feature. I think it will be really good. Are you willing to accept it? Because, you know, like, he did all this work that that's probably took quite a lot of time to do like this real time stuff. And there's not one commit, there's a bunch of them. And it like, it, it really hurts for me to think that I cannot accept it because I plan to do that myself. And, you know, from scratch using WebSockets and so on and so forth. So basically um, he just wasted his own time and then wasted my own time to review that. And now I'm in a situation where I like, I want to merge that because this is a really good code, but I can't because I wanted to show it to everyone in the videos. So please, before you do something like this, before you implement new features, new major features, always open an issue and ask the maintainer, are you willing to actually accept something like this? Uh, and the last point, which is uh, kind of a nitpick, I guess. I mean, uh, I think for some projects and some people it's really important, but for me it's sort of nothing major. Uh, it's kind of try to conform to the style of the project, both with code, which in this case is actually done very well. I think the formatting is uh, good and, you know, the um, ESLint doesn't really throw any errors and stuff, so it's all formatted like two spaces and everything, everything is good but also with the commit messages. So if you see here that he uses prefixes uh, for the server side and client side code, which I know I know like a bunch of people who try to prefix their commits with like fix or um, bug fix or um, new feature or whatever, change request documentation, you know, whatever you can imagine, like here in this case, he prefixes the client and server. But I, for example, don't do this. So if you open my commit log, I just write what I do, right? I start with a capital letter and then I say, okay, add this, add that, fix this, fix that, merge pull request, handle that stuff, and so on and so forth. Uh, once again, I personally don't really mind seeing the commit history that is different, but I know for a fact that some of the projects will reject your pull request just based on that because you, you, know, you didn't really conform to their um, style or ask you to change that, which is again, additional work. So you, it's, it's always better if you start with that. Um, I think that's basically it from my side. Once again, I'm not bashing work from Javier here. I'm not bashing all the work that he did. This is a great work, but again, I cannot merge it because first of all, there's too much here. Second of all, I cannot merge real time changes as I said at all, because I was planning to show how to build that. Uh, and uh, there are in general, like I left some comments here, if you're interested, there's a bunch of comments that are uh, explain, you know, some things that are, from my perspective are a bit, um, could be done better, let's put it this way. Uh, for example, there is the commit that adds the delay, uh, wait a second, where is it, uh, RxJS, yeah, there you go. So there's the commit that adds, for example, the delay 
in development environment for all AJAX requests. In my opinion, this commit is not needed at all because I mean, we have uh, DevTools, right? And if you know how to use DevTools, you just go to network and enable throttling, which uh, you can even have a custom throttling, which will be like um, custom profile. And then you can say that latency is 200 milliseconds. And there you go. Here you have your two second delay. I like, I'm not completely sure why this commit, for example, is needed. So, I mean, I have my nitpicks as well, obviously, as you can see, but you know, that's the thing. Um, I hope you found at least something in this video that is helpful. Uh, I'm going to do live stream sometime around next week, probably since I'm releasing this video now. So stay tuned and let's see how it goes. Um, and see you next time, guys. Bye.